so much for tuning in. My name is Josh and you're watching C3S Garage. In today's video, I am going to show you guys how to have an automated frunk for your Tesla Model Y. I think this is a game changer for the frunk as you are now able to use this as a native automatic frunk. Let's go ahead and see that again. I just don't think I can get tired of that ever. And now I'm able to use this a lot more than I used to. So with that being said, if you guys are interested in watching this video, stay tuned. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Before starting, I do wanna do a quick recap of what's included in the box. I know it seems like a lot, but trust me, it's not that difficult. In the box, you'll have a mainframe, you have a couple of struts, a couple of latches, a ton of different cables and screws. I've taken the liberty of taking everything out and just laying everything for us to go over each particular item and noting what each item is. The most familiar item you will see is the struts, you'll have two. You will also have a latch with a latch motor, a mainframe that will control everything, a set of brackets for the struts, and lastly, a ton of different cables. Starting off this project, we're going to go ahead and open our front manually. This is the last time you will do this, so be sure to remember this time forever. <laughs> the main area of the front is being held up by four screws and a whole bunch of clips. This is all plastic, so don't be afraid of just prying things open and removing them. Starting with the main cover, we're going to go ahead and unclip the whole thing off. Once we remove this, we'll get access to a couple of screws. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and remove the first two screws from the front part and then two more screws that are inside of the front. Before removing these plastic portions, we're going to go ahead and remove what holds the light together. This must be done before removing the front in its entirety. And again, this is only being held up by a couple of clips and a small cable that ties into the light. You may notice a few more connections on my particular car, and that's because I have a full LED strip light. Yours should only have one connection. And don't forget to remove the windshield wiper clip before removing the front. Before continuing, I just want to take a quick second to acknowledge and appreciate how beautiful this engine, I'm sorry, this motor, I'm sorry, there is nothing here. Let's not appreciate this. <laughs> Using my Meco El Verde duster, I'm going to go ahead and clean out any particles that this may have. I quickly want to point out some of the Tesla initiatives seen here, like the Tesla manifold. How cool is that? I also want to point out that this is essentially the motor of your Tesla and everything that moves your car. I think it's pretty cool to see it and I just love seeing how things work with these cars. And I just want to go ahead and clean up as much as possible given the fact that this is probably the last time I will be in this area again. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove your HEPA filter. This only has two screws on each side and it's super easy to remove. After removing your HEPA filter, we're going to go ahead and use a broomstick to hold your hood in place. Remember, we will be removing the struts, so this thing will have nothing to hold it in place and it would fall on your head. <laughs> to quickly point out, the struts are being held up by two separate portions, one in the bottom and one on the top. This take a little bit of time to take off. They have a couple of clips that you must pull back in order to remove them from its screw. I would highly suggest for you guys to use a prying tool or a flathead screw to make sure that you are able to pry the clips open and remove the strut bars without too much effort. After removing the strut, you'll have access to this little pin. You must use a 10 millimeter socket to be able to remove it as well. Once you remove it, you have clear access to be able to start your installation process with the new struts and the new brackets. One thing to note is that each bracket has its own positioning and each bracket tells you exactly where it goes. Right hand goes in the right, left hand goes in the left. There's also two black little screws that you will use for each bracket. I quickly want to point out that this bracket is very nice, it's very sturdy, and it will replace the positioning of your strut bar in the car. And to install this, all you need is an Allen wrench. Make sure that you do this before you install the strut bar, because if not, you will not have access to do this. Once the bracket is installed, we're going to go ahead and install our first strut. The strut has no order, so you could use whichever you want on each side really like how strong and sturdy this feels as well. Remember, the cable goes in the bottom part and the rest of the strut will follow. And it's a little bit hard to show you guys exactly how to install it, but essentially you have one piece that goes into the bracket portion and the other piece will fall into the car. Once you're installing this, you will see exactly how it is. All you need to do is push up a little bit and have some brute force. Next, we're gonna go into the driver's side. And this side is a little bit more complicated, so I just went ahead and removed everything in one piece rather than splitting it. 
And I just simply wanted to point out that the same exact mechanism that you have in your OEM strut is the same exact mechanism that you have on your regular new strut. It's just simple clip that clips into the joint of the car and on the bracket. And I just want to make you guys feel better because I believe this is the hardest part of the whole installment process. During installing the struts, we're going to go ahead and close the hood. We should feel some resistance going up and down when moving the hood. This just simply means that you did a great job at installing the struts. The struts are doing their job and we are ready to move on to the next step. This next portion, we're simply going to focus on removing the latch, installing the new one and installing everything together. Latch assembly is compromised of a motor the latch itself that will attach into the current latch that you have, an extension cable, that's your emergency cable, and your standard trigger cable. For removing, I simply wanna mark down where the latch is at right now because you need some fine tuning when you are adding the new latch. I wanna just simply mark it before removing it. Using a 10 millimeter bolt, we're gonna go ahead and remove the existing latch. Next, we have a bit of a complicated step. Looking at the standard OEM latch, that's gonna go in position just like it normally would, but you're gonna add the new system to the latch almost like a sandwich. I know this might sound confusing, but it's not. Once you've installed this and sandwiched them together, one thing to note if you're doing it correctly is that little pointer should be pointing towards your right. The next step is we're going to remove that round spring. We're gonna connect our new cable into the position where the spring was at, and then we're gonna add our spring back. Using some gloves to start this process, I'm going to go ahead and remove the spring. Luckily, there's not a lot of tension, so this should not be a difficult task to do. Once you have successfully removed the spring, we're going to add the little cable that you see here and put it where the spring was at. Next, we're going to go ahead and add our spring back. Remember, the part with the little needle goes up top and the part with the little L-shaped portion goes in the bottom. As I mentioned, the spring does not have a lot of tension, so this should not be too difficult to do. And this is how it should look. Feel free to pause the video if you want to compare. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together. I'm going to add both screws, but I'm not going to tie it to the fullest as I want to tweak it and make sure that it's leveled to the front. Remember, because the hood is being attached to the new system, you may need some fine tweaking and some fine tuning to make sure that it levels and it closes properly. And just to do a quick take on how everything should be sandwiched and look together. You have quite a few different cables here and quite a few things going on at the same time. So don't be stressed. Just take a look and see if yours matches to what we have right now. Next, we're going to go ahead and install our emergency opener. Feel free to remove the broomstick. I, for some reason, did not show you guys how to do that step. Don't worry about the battery there. I saw somewhere in YouTube that you should keep a battery to jumpstart the car. So I have it there. In this portion of the video, we're going to do connections. And the first thing that you need to do is connect your fuse cable to the positive charge of the car. Simply pull back the red plastic cover and using a 10 millimeter socket, unbolt just a tiny bit, plug in and then bolt back. Our next connection is going to be D5. You may have a different set of letters and numbers, but it's the brown connector with the purple top. And that's gonna go directly into our small little motor. There will be a couple of other connections, so I will go over these connections towards the end of the video. Moving to our main frame connection, we're going to go ahead and grab our little black box and connect it to the main big cable. This cable has an orange top and should be pretty straightforward connection. Our next connection is going to be our warning chime. This is a little speaker that warns you when the hood has been opened or closed. Let's go ahead and connect that. Your next connection is towards the front right side of the car. It's a simple red and yellow connection. The matching one has a dual connection, which means it's a bypass. So you'll connect this one to the main area and then you will connect the other one to the main connector. Moving over to our latch, you will see a red clip connection. You must substitute this clip with the new connection that has a purple clip in it. This is a matching connection and it's a unique connection, so there's no mistake with other connections. 
Within that same connection, you will have another connection that will plug into your older connection, essentially another bypass. Next, let's find our ground cable and find a suitable place to connect it. I found a place towards the back end and it worked perfectly. You are able to connect this anywhere else you want to as long as it's touching metal. After installing our ground connector, we're going to go ahead and find the positive terminal connector and connect it to the terminal itself. Remember that first connection we did? That same exact one. If you did all the steps correctly, your black box should have a red blinking light. Before we continue, I want to give a quick checkup to every connection that we did. We connected our positive terminals and the number description for this one is B+. Moving over to our ground connection and the description for this is G and D as in ground. We connected both strut cables to the strut connections. We also connected the main frame to the main connection. Our warning chime is connected to D2. Ground connector that's connected to the motor is D5. The bypass that's connected to the actuator is D6. Moving over to the latch, you'll have two connectors, D8, which is above, D7, which is right below it. And that completes the full installation and cable installation for this particular setup. Next, we're going to go ahead and do some fine tuning in the latch to make sure that the hood closes and opens properly. Once you have found a good positioning, we're going to go ahead and test it out using our emergency exit. Let's go ahead and plug that in and test it out to see if it opens and closes accordingly. Keep in mind that I have multiple cables because I have an LED strip, but you should only have one cable to connect. Once you have connected, a light should light up and show you that the car has been plugged in and you are able to test it out. You can use the emergency exit button to try this, but I wanted to feel cool and use my watch to test it out. And guys, I think this is so cool to see. <laughs> One thing that I will point out is that you can use your watch. You could also use the emergency exit button that's inside the hood. You could also use your main screen and you can use your phone and it works natively with it. Next, we're going to tweak how fast or how slow you want the hood to go down and come up. By pressing this button 10 seconds, you are able to hear a beep. After that, you'll hear a couple of sequential beeps. The faster they go, the faster the hood will close and open. The slower they go, the slower the hood will close and open. There is also a feedback beep that tells you exactly how fast this will close. Just to quickly point out, I was able to fine tune my latch fairly quickly and I simply wanted to do a close up of how I managed to get those done. As you guys can tell, the back portion is slightly lower and the main portion is slightly higher. I was able to tweak it to this point to where it looks almost fleshed out with the car and that made the close out fairly straightforward for me. Now, you might be wondering what the hell do I do with these cables and all these guts that are here? There are a ton of zip ties that T-Vibes provides for your kit, so be sure to use all of them. I managed to do the wire management around and attach them to other cables. That way, I am sure in myself that these cables will not obstruct anything else in the car. They will not burn out with anything that's hot in the car, and I will be able to put the frunk and all the other plastic components back in its play without obstructing, cutting, or messing with the cables themselves. And I know I could skip this part, but cut the zip tight as it is just so satisfying to hear. Once everything has been secured in place, we're able to go back and start putting our stuff back in the front. This is fairly simple. Work backwards, essentially putting your HEPA filter first, adding the two screws on each side while making sure that there are no cables stuck in the mix. And I hate myself for saying this, but next you're going to put your bucket back in the front. <laughs> be sure to be careful with any cables. Do not obstruct any of the components or some of them are fragile. So just be gentle and be careful while putting this. And yes, there are a ton of clips in the middle and in the side. So be sure you clip everything back together before you start adding the screws back. 
Next, after securing the front in its place, we're going to go ahead and install the emergency exit. We do not want any people to get stuck in here. <laughs> after connecting, you'll see some lights come up. I have the strip light, so that's why that lights up. But you are able to test out your front and see if it closes properly. Well, it seems like we're pretty much done. So we're going to go ahead and install the clips back, put the exit emergency back, and then we're going to continue with the rest of the panels. You are able to now screw the first two front screws. Do not forget to clip back out the water windshield wiper clip and add the two screws to the main portion of the front. And lastly, let's put back the main panel. This has like 20 different clips, so make sure you clip all of them. <laughs> Notice that some of the top clips may need some help, so be sure you touch them and make sure that they're actually in their holes or else they'll just stick out. And to finish, you are able to just simply put all your shed back in place. <laughs> As always, once you are done with this portion, be sure to give it a quick cleanup. We do not want any fingerprints on the crime scene. Before I forget, do not forget to put this back in place. This is your emergency release. Make sure you put that back in. I added a zip tie to keep both cables together. Simply tie those up and put everything back together and watch the magic happen. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it seems like we're finally done with the installation. The first thing that I want to point out is that the installation took me about three hours to finish. I honestly have seen a couple of other videos where the installation took a lot less than that, but I don't know why it took me such a long time. I think the struts were a very difficult thing for me to get, even though I have a very uh, small wrists for some reason it just seemed like the, the driver's side was very difficult to get a handle of so that took me quite a while the alignment as well as the fine tuning of the main uh, latch was not the easiest and it took me a while to understand exactly how to align it on a second point i did look over my friend's gamble 1080s youtube channel i would definitely give him a follow he was pretty much a crucial part for this video simply because he really broke everything down in a very simple way the third point that i want to make is i believe firmly that Tesla's should come with this out of the gate. I know the Cybertruck has it, but none of the other Teslas have it, and I think this is a must. Why? Because you do have quite the amount of space in this car to load things like groceries and whatnot, but the way they make you understand how to close it, one, how to use it, two, and the fact that you have to literally manually be opening and closing it just seems just, it just seems outdated for a car like this one. So having companies like T-Vibes to provide you with this type of service just make things a lot better for you. I do hope that one day Tesla will come with this right out of the gate. I'm sure that they will. But as of right now, if you own a Tesla Model Y from 2020 or 2021 or whatever the case might be, or a Tesla Model 3, this is your way to go. Something that I want to point out is how smooth and how nice it sounds. There is actually a beep that tells you when the front has been closed or open. Uh, and I think that's great. I think that the system itself is very complete. And lastly, I do want to point out that the installation, as I mentioned, was not the easiest, was not the most difficult. I think that it was just a matter of taking time doing things properly. With that being said, I want to give a huge shout out to Gamble 1080 for helping us create this video, helping us with the installation of this product. I also want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, T-Vibes, which I think is a great company to follow as well as amazing products. I think the soft closing and soft opening without having to do it manually is just a simple must and it's so satisfying to see. Thank you so much all of you guys for staying tuned with me, liking and subscribing. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!